Hello, hello. <clears throat> I am getting my service prepped, waiting on people to get on. And so I'm just a little early today. And so I thought if I'm a little early, then maybe a couple people will show up. And then we get to visit a little bit. So we do have the streaming on. I guess you'll get all the steps done. Okay. Hello from North Carolina. Hello, Miss Pat. I was just making sure we're all the right people. I mean, the right time. Good afternoon. I'm early just to be here. Making sure I get everything all set up, not starting now, just came on. And wanted to make sure I got all my T's crossed and my I's dotted. <laughs> there we go. Hello, hello, Joyce and Crystal and Anger. And from the villages, all right. The village ladies are going to come see me in December. I think it was December or January. I'm not sure. They were supposed to come. You guys were supposed to come tomorrow, but it got changed. It's a crazy, crazy week to try it, I'm sure. I'm normally late to most things, laugh out loud. But you're here, Stephanie. That's great. I got this wire that's like hanging in my filming. Today. Oh, I'm switching around so you see everything. <laughs> Let's see. I'll show I have these little Velcro things. Do I have any of them still here? Oh, there's some Velcro. I need to buy some of these. Oh, hello, hello, guys. Hi, Lorraine. I'm normally late. Malda and Pamela. Hello, hello. Hang it. Let me see if I can use this. This is my filming for Patreon. I have to use this camera for that. Come on. I'm going to show how these cute little Velcro things. I should have kept a couple so I can keep my cord out of the way. And let's see if that works. Nope. <laughs> I need to tighten this so it stops spinning around. I just got the wreath kit and I'm in love with it. Thank you. I'm thrilled. It's got everything you need. That's what's so great about the kits. The Less Pink kits, they have everything you need. And you can go watch every lesson on YouTube for free. Hello, Miss Debbie and Belva. I hope and hope and hope and you're feeling better, Belva. I've been praying for you to be out of pain and healing. A lot of people out there need prayers right now, guys. And uh, it makes you feel lucky that you're so blessed is what it does. And, and I even sad for those who feel lonely right now. So I'm pulling all my goodies together. I wanted to come on just a little bit early, so if you guys came early, you could come visit with it near each other. And I have everything set up. Just make sure that with little things that go wrong, I want to make sure I'm on and you're not waiting on me. The crash. We did our oversized start of our oversized on Patreon. And it's just like, you know, everybody isn't having a problem getting on, then two or three people had a problem, then 
other people are all on and everything's fine. And you still have that one who's not able to get on. The swelling is down and just waiting for the green and blue to go away. That's okay. Those are the last colors. <laughs> yellow. Then, then you go to yellow. I'm excited to see how to do it. Well, I'm excited that you're on with me. The, um, we drew it and started our background black and started with those red flowers first. The big red flower. And I've got one flower that I've used. The big flowers for one of them. Uh, I'm losing it. Who is that? Oh, Deb. Deb, we're doing, Debbie is doing um, some berry wine and some white to tone it down and then some berry wine accents. Anyway, it's going to match her bedspread, so that's pretty awesome. All right, so what other color do I need? Burn umber. And I need more citrus somewhere. Brand new bottle. There we go. And... I'm getting big bottles of Wicker White now. <laughs> I say, give me those eight ounce bottles. We're doing a lot. I need a burn number. That's a lot of burn number. There we go. Okay. Oh, I started to say, did I not do a pine cone on these worksheets? I did. Okay. So, if y'all want to get ready, painting on the same size canvas as yours. Are they painting on the same size canvas? No. I tell them, let's split this in half. So we're doing, if you do a 16 by 20, it's not like an oversize. So we're doing it on um, half of that 30 by 40. So that's 40 by 60. So we're doing 30 by 40. We're turning it landscape like that, that instead of up and down. Hello, Miss Teresa. And... Um, did you get your everything worked out for Crowdcast, Miss Teresa? Stephanie, Belva, yes, I am. Okay. No, I told everybody to use smaller, but they could use larger if they wanted to. Uh, we are still nine minutes early. I don't know. No, we're five minutes early. Hello, Leanne. You've been rocking those paintings, Leanne. Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> Miss Leanne, it's not a secret, I'll try to tell you. I'm going to be bad. I got you for my Christmas exchange. <laughs> so I shipped yours out today. Oh, we have... <laughs> Well, really, no, until November 30th when you next go on. <laughs> That's not good. I don't know, Leanne. Hope you feel that way when you get it. Um, so, Teresa, when's that? I, we're going to be on Wednesday. This Wednesday. Wednesday's not the 30th. <laughs> Tess Avery had me. She sent me my present today. I know Leanne's doing. I was I was just told that you like to go by Lee, not Leanne. But everything you said though says Leanne, Miss Osley. <laughs> okay. Thanksgiving. Did we not do this Wednesday? Oh. I got to get my calendar. You're right. Maybe we we moved it to the one after. Oh, that's a blessing. <laughs> okay, Mark will be happy. <laughs> we have another week. Nope. Okay, so we have, we're doing it the Wednesday after Thanksgiving, right, Teresa? See, I need friends like you to keep me on track, especially when Michelle's going to be on vacation for over two weeks. Yeah, over two weeks. Okay, guys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Teresa's became my assistant for um, Patreon. Yeah. She's helped me with people, and then she can't get, <laughs> then she has the problem. 
<clears throat> and then the teacher's going on Wednesday and everybody's getting ready for Thanksgiving. So anyway, <clears throat> are you still there, Miss Pat? I liked your gift that you got from your neighbors. That was really nice if you're out there. I am today, I know we still have three minutes, but I am today doing a wood because I couldn't find a 12 by 12 canvas at my house and my studio. I was going to do 11 by 14, but then when I went back to the picture today, it is really square, so it doesn't matter. I made the pattern so it would go on 11 by 14. And there's our wreath and our pine cones, our bows, and our cardinal. So everything we need to get this party rolling. Are y'all ready for Thanksgiving? I'm drinking out of it right now. That's awesome, Pat. I thought, how fun, because you can see his smiling face every time you get your get a drink. That's pretty nice of them, Pat. Yeah, you love Cardinals. Um, I I always spell it wrong. I'm thinking I learned that you put an I before, but then I guess I switched around and thought, no, it's a nail at the end. <laughs> So I'm going to get it right. All right, guys, we are one minute away. Okay, so uh, this needs to dry. I'm going to dry this really quick with a hair dryer. Thank you guys for coming on. I'm going to hit recording. It's already recording. <laughs> right, right. Where am I? That's what I was thinking today. Wait a minute. I am, I have different places and everything. Remember to hit the thumbs up. Yes, that's nice. I have different places to go for different things. So I have this program and then Patreon. You have to do another whole system. And then when I'm recording, it's on Zoom, so for another system. And so today I'm like, do I have the right system? And Mark keeps saying, write it down, write it down. So I know he's right, but I, I got this but until I don't have this. Hello, Miss Kim. I missed you coming on. So Leanne, you didn't say if you want to be called Lee. You don't see a record. This is live, Teresa. So on studio it goes live and it automatically where are we at we're on our membership so it automatically stays here and she puts a thumbnail to show the picture on front on your membership uh, page okay just hit the like button thank you you don't see record now. I know. But it says in the live when we're still live. See the live up there? No matter my mom used to call me Leanne when I was in trouble. No, but that's what <laughs> that's why Michelle was called Michelle when she was in trouble. So that's why she wants to be called Shelly. And she said, All my friends call me Shelly. I'm like, why did you ever tell me to go by Michelle? And Amanda goes, Really, Michelle, after all these years, you think we can change that easy? So I can't help it. I want y'all to know who I'm talking about. So I say Michelle, but I'm trying in person to say what she wants me to say, but it's not working. And I said, it's not, it's not Lee, it's Leanne. She goes, excuse me. She told me personally, she likes to be Lee. <laughs> so, so now she's right again. I don't want you to feel like you're in trouble, Leanne. Um, hello, DJ. It's 10 p.m. here, so I'm in danger of falling asleep. It's 10 p.m. Where are you? Ami, where are you? I'm sorry, I'm confused. 10 p.m. 
Um, hello, Susan. It must be northern thing. Okay. Oh, the UK. Ah, oh, that's right. Okay. It must be a northern thing. I believe that. All you girls from up north. Okay. Um, so what we're doing, I know this is somebody else's art. It's not going to look like that when we do it, but I want to get the impression of something that I like. I'm trying not to do any pictures that are not uh, a live photo or something, um, but that's that's what inspired me. So I'm, I'm doing a 12 by 12, but you guys can do 11 by 14 too. So whichever works the pattern. I just want to, if you're a tulip level, so we have the pattern of the only thing I need traced on. I don't need the wreath actually traced. Then our worksheets are the wreath and the pine cones. And so I'm hoping that when you get them, you're able to print them out and just lay, um, you're going to lay wax paper over it or clear plastic over it. Or even some people have a plexiglass that they lay over um, and then stroke and wipe it off. All right, and we sell those practice mats. Um, you can get two of those for three dollars um, that are larger. So, like if you if you had a book and you had it open, it would um, cover both sides and keep the book open. So we would practice on that. So that was pretty good. All right, so I have cleaned this counter a few times, <laughs> my tabletop. Um, so let's get started by um if you have a white canvas that's good i just had to make this wood white really quick um i must be in there all right so let's get started and let me show you what's going on okay so we have let's get a straight all right so there's my canvas depending on the size that you're using okay and I just want you to see if I was laying my pattern out, I have it going off the edge this way. See, so I could still fit it on this square and still have the doors showing over here. But if it's taller, then you're going to be 11 by 14. You'll have more space at the top and less space on the side. All right, but that really isn't going to matter. Um, I might pull that back out when I'm trying to trace on the um, cardinal and, and the bow itself. That will help. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to, first of all, get that wreath in there. And so what I wanted to do on the wreath is I wanted to use, um, I use sap and white because I want it muted. I don't want that bright green like citrus i don't know why i put the citrus out because there's a, a few little leaves like in there later okay so we have sap green oops where am i at we got quite a bit of wreath that we're going to be doing so i'm going to pull this over here And some white. Okay, we're using multi surface, which most of you know that. All right, so one of the things I wanted to do is we're going to have pine needles going inside and out. I am going to use a 16 flat and I am going to put out some floating medium. I've been, this floating medium is thinner because it's been in my garage for a long time. So it might not look as fluffy, but I hate to waste it. Okay, so I'm going to come right here. Now, what's going to happen is I am going to get 
wait one second. I want to grab my graphite paper. cardinal and my bow in and just because I want to see I want to see where this bow goes and just so that I can see where my wreath is going to be now remember the shiny side goes down and if I do in a pen I can usually see where I drew it and where I didn't draw it, okay? So we're going to do, this bow is three, oops, I moved it, darn it. It's doing three fingers wide out here, can you see that? And three here. But don't make it any bigger, like not a full three. I should tape this. I should not be letting it move around. So I'm doing, I'm being bad. Y'all need to be good. Okay. Okay, so... Let's do the cardinal. So the cardinal, to, to get the body, the first thing I do on the cardinal is I do this rounded belly. Okay, so see the rounded tummy? All right, then, I want to put this up a little bit so it takes the shine out. All right, then I put right in here a V that goes into the head and then a V that goes out. <clears throat> and see this, it continues and goes up here. So the tummy comes all the way around and then goes up to here. All right, so then I decide how I want a full body. See, that's like a big oval all the way around. And then I do the wing. Then we're going to come in here with a tail. Gets a little smaller and gets a little whiter at the bottom. All right. So right in here, this is the other color, other drawing I like, is your eye goes right here. So you have the black right in here in the very front of the beak. And then it goes out where the eye is and comes down on the chest some. And I even do a little bit of black sometimes on the tip of there tip of the wings and the tip of the tail. <clears throat> now I put some pine cones, just a few pine cones. So to get our circle, I want you to see that from the edge, even if you've got 11 by 14, you want it as far as you can stretch to right here. And then as far as you can stretch this way, Okay, so it's one big circle, right? And it's going off the edge, off the edge, off the edge. Okay. <clears throat> so all we're concentrating on is right here now. See that wreath, that circle? That should make it easy for you. All right. Now, if you're looking at what I did here, I'm doing this chisel stroke. But I'm going to go like this, and then I'm smushing around in here. And then we'll bring a few more strokes the opposite way. Or we might just leave them. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of medium in this brush. And I'm going to get sap and white. So what you really needed to do is draw your cardinal and your bow. And then from here on, 
I'm going to show you that I'm going out and back, out and back, because I don't want it to look like perfect pine needles. But I do need some sap in here, so. Okay. So it does, you don't want it perfect. That's the thing that's important here. I can't believe it's Monday already and my, <laughs> my lawn guy's back. It goes right by this window. I thought it'd be safe in the front of the house where my studio was set up. He, he would come right the same time every day that we were teaching. Okay. Hi, Catherine. Ready to paint the evening away. Thank you, Judy. Hey, Miss Lucy. You've put up the prettiest pictures. Bill made me supper. Oh, how nice is he? Now let's paint, right? Okay, I'm going to come here trying not to get my whole cardinal, but it's okay if you get a little bit of it. Got some green in here. Now remember when we're coming around this way, it would go off the side. All right, so what I want to do is come back in some this way. And oh, crud. I messed up. I didn't do the background. Darn it. Well, I'm going to finish and then hopefully you can come back and do your background later. Darn it. <laughs> I'm not starting over. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad y'all still like me. <laughs> because, holy heck. Okay. Yeah, it should look like a porcupine. That's fine. All right, so you'll see when I need to get medium because when it's dry, when the canvas looks dry, we want to make sure that we come in there and go get some medium so you can go back over it. See, it's real important that we get some of that white and I pull some up from the outside in so you don't have all that porcupine look. See, we're going to pull it this way. All right. Well, when everything's in there, you don't get that feel. Okay. So this is what I did. I smashed, smash, smash, smash the 16 with those darker colors. I could use a scruffy, but I want to use the 16 and smash it. So try, you want to concentrate on your wreath going around. And I do have the bow. I'm going over my bow and my bird, but I can still see where it is.
So I guess we would go out here more over here. take some of that dark green off where the bow goes. See where the bow is going to go. The same thing happens over here. And then I want to take some off of here where where the fluff of the bow is. I can wipe it off a little bit, but we got the pattern on there. All you would do is let this totally dry and then put your pattern on. But I wanted to kind of stay away from the, the bird and the bow. So bird comes down here. And then his tail's down here. And his wing goes out here. Okay. Can you see the bird? I don't like rounded bows. So just remember this is kind of straight here and straight here. We just had to fix somebody's bow that looked like that. And there we go. All right. So a little bit of shine. Go too much glare on there. That's better. <laughs> yep, but I do fix problems as I go. Oh, you bought the angel wings? Oh. That's nice, Lucy. I thought I wanted them to go to somebody that would really love them. That is awesome. I hate selling my samples sometimes because I'm like, I don't want to have to paint it again. But I always said, this would be a great headboard. These would look really pretty. You know how you put them so people can take pictures in between them. That's awesome. Okay. So, now what we need to do, guys, is um, I want to paint the bow, and then we can come back here and put a few. See, you're going to crisscross, which I usually tell you never to do with grass. But... I'm going to pull some white into here. But see, they're not not—they're not all going the same way. You've got some one way and some the other way. So I'm not going to make this perfect now because what's going to happen is we're going to put the red bow and everything and the pine cones and come and do this right on top of here all right medium because it's dry now showing dry put 
Crisscross, crisscross. All right. Okay, we're going to get burnt umber. I'm going to let that red stuff dry. Oop. Okay. Actually, I am going to do a hair dryer again. Sorry. <coughs> Okay, so <clears throat> now what I want to do <clears throat> before I do any more here, I'm going to get the medium gray and white. And I usually do this with a sponge, but since I, this is another way to teach you, <laughs> since I didn't do that, I'm going to put some white. I know it's not funny, sorry. You'll watch me later, okay. What size canvas do I suggest? Um, a 16 by 16 or, uh, oh, 12, um, 16 by 20 is good. Or 16 by 16, if you want to paint it at the full wreath. It is interesting, though, to have it just a part of one, by the way. That's why I love this. That's my favorite part I loved about this. Is that um, it was off-centered. There we go. All right. Now, look, I'm going to take medium. Pick up some white and side low some gray, medium gray, floating medium and medium gray. I'm picking up white too though, so I can float with it, kind of, sort of. All right, so I'm going to come right in here first. All right, and I'm going to shade it a little bit, like a double shade. So it looks like it's the door. And I'm going to skip this and come right here and push down. And definitely would want to do it before we put all the wreath on it. <laughs> so you don't have to redo it later. Like I just did. All right. This is just the molding on the door. Okay, and then I'm going to come right over here, leave that big space there, and I start doing the same thing again, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep getting the medium and come right here. And it also has a shadow. Just rub it off there, and you wouldn't see it coming down there unless you're all the way down here. See how I came all the way down to there. And then all you do, guys, is you take 
a second second brush and you just wipe off these guys I should have wiped this off when I was there so if you wipe it off right then then you don't have to repaint this later but I'm going to repaint it because I need to bring that in there and right here okay see that wiped right off okay let's do a couple over here now now when i'm doing this i'm going to pick up the white medium and gray this is still the 16. Now, one thing that you can do is to run your finger along here, find out where you want it here, and then pull your little finger. I'm pulling my little finger so it gives a nice straight line. See, the little finger gauges it so it stays the same width all the way. Whether you're lefty or righty, turn it the other way um, for the opposite hand, like upside down, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Now, that helps for that, but kind of what happens here is you have a gauge to go by now by how wide that is. So we're going to put another groove here. This doesn't have to be perfect, remember. Okay, so that just gives you some interest in the back. All right, now this is what you need to do right here. I'm going to wet this brush, the 16 by the 16 flat. And I'm going to take out those lines. Just, just wipe them out. And it was like they were always in the background. There you go. <laughs> but, but I should have done it in the beginning. And then it, wouldn't, it would be a lot easier. Right. So it gives you some dimension. Okay. And that's pretty, um, so I'm at an angle. If I put this up, see, this looks like it's at an angle, but when I put it flat, it's straight. So don't get deceived by that. All right. Now, so the first thing I want to do on here is, so this can be drawing. I'm actually going to kind of put white over this. And then the red will pop. Okay. Now the feature in this is going to be the red bow and the red cardinal. They're the, they're the points that really pop. But then it was kind of cool because um, the white um, brushed up on the red bow, which it was a very interesting look. And I like that kind of look. It looks like it blurred out, like maybe it's in a snowstorm and you don't see it really clearly. Okay. And then your cardinal is also going to be red. He's got his tummy right here. He's actually standing on the bow. 
so and he comes all the way here and then he fans out see his belly it goes all the way all the way there then his, his uh, wing goes out there and his tail is here all right so that's just kind of a base coat that you can do easily to be able to put the red and have the red really show all right i have to do that lots of times when i'm doing a black background and i put a, some red in it red flowers poppies whatever all right Okay, now what we want to do next is we're going to figure out where the acorns are. So there is an acorn that I think we put one over here and it kind of goes off the edge. All right, so we want to balance this out. I have an acorn that's up here. comes in here the so one two three and there's a triangle and then there's a triangle one two here's one so then it needs to be a piece of one right in here <coughs> excuse me All right, so if you look at this worksheet, I am still using, um, when I was using this, I was using the, the um, I use a 16, but you might feel more comfortable with a, a 12. But we are going to, when we're doing this, we're going to do it together and I'm going to show you that I have the burn umber on here first. Then I'm going to side stroke the white. Can you see I side stroke right against that white puddle? All right, go back and forth because you want the first tip to be white both sides. Explain triangle. Okay, triangle is a triangle design. So um, if we have one, two, three, that's a triangle, that's a triangle. So I was trying to figure out where to put it. So if I did these three, then I can have another triangle, one, two, three. And you can use one and that triangle for the next triangle. And so you have another triangle here. But if there's two in a row over here, it wouldn't work. So you kind of balance out your design by doing the triangles, all right? Now, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put one in the center. So I'm pushing this down on the chisel. And these two little guys, there's always this little point at the top of the pine cone. All right, so you can kind of come across in front maybe. And I still have the brown on my brush, so I'm going to come in here and get the white. So what I wanted to show you is we have a peak. And then we have the two sides. So it's up there, then two sides, and then we start crossing across. One, two, three, four, back and forth. There's all kinds of pine cones. You can look at the pine cones and do different ways. But this is just a quick, easy pine cone for me. One there, one here. Then you're out past the brown. See that? And then one in the middle. Now what this white should look like is the edge of the pine cone that comes out see the edge and then it comes across well it doesn't have to be exactly that so i just pick up and go across 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 so you're laying pressure pressure you keep picking up white and now we want the dark brown to show here underneath Uh, 
Okay, so isn't that kind of simple? All right, so can you see that looks like that pine cone is going that way? Now this pine cone over here is kind of going away. So we missed the top pieces. So I'm going to come back across here. See, so you're only going to see little bits. Now what I can do, I have to go get more burn number now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these smaller. So one, two, one in the middle. Isn't that kind of fun? See how it went off? So all I did is to, you could lay a piece of paper there and do the peak and then follow through and it might help you see that better. Now I'd like to have this look like it's coming at me. All right, so I'm going to lean it this way just a little bit more. You do one in the middle. One, two, three. So you still want that dark brown to show, and you also want to layer it though. I think they're pretty. I, lots of times, guys. I put, I use treasure gold instead of the white. To me, this is a frosty white background. It looks like snow's coming down. So they would have snow tips on your pine cones. Now I'm back to the one, two, three, maybe four and five, the little peak at the top. A little bit closer. Then we're going one. Two, three. Okay. One in the middle, one on the side. See, I had more pieces in here in the middle. I think it's pretty just like that without a bunch of other red in there, but one, two, three, four. So now this is the key. You're pushing down the brown and you're lifting the white past this, past the edge I painted. All right. But you push and lift, push, lift, push, lift. So with the, with the worksheets, what you do is that you just practice on top of my stroke. Okay, so some of them I think look better than others. Okay, so I'm going to put some pine needles coming out and a little bit goes over the the red bow but not yet all 
Okay. <coughs> all right. I think we're dry enough by letting that sit there while we're doing all of our pine cones. Even if you get a couple of pine cones um, done, then it's easier to come back and add the other pine cones. As long as you put where the brown goes, that will be easy. Okay, so let's pick up our red. Oh, I thought I already had red out. Let's get some red. So, um, apple red. Ooh, I think I might have done too much. And some berry wine. Now, when I say berry wine, lots of times the shading I did on the apple red was actually burn umber or sap green. Okay, so just remember that there are other options. Okay, now this is still kind of wet. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the bow. And he's sitting on the bow anyway. So we have this underneath here the the opening in the bow at the top and so you're going to see through this with the white so I kind of brush the strokes in the direction they should go but then I have to go back and do a lot of shading with the wine or the burn umber to get that movement then we have a knot in the middle. And there we go. Okay, so what looked really cool though is we are going to brush white back on top of his later, which I love that look. It was fun. I think I tried to do that. Yeah. I'll show you in a minute. All right. It's got a ripple in there. Okay, so look, this is what happens. We have the berry wine in here. Same thing with berries. We did dark, then we add some red apple, uh, red berries on top. See how they pop out because you have the dark underneath. So then I'm putting dark in these places. But look, then we go back with white and just do a, uh, a sloppy kind of stroke back on top of it. All right. Okay, so one thing that happens, I hate to say this, is I need to dry it again because it's hard to shade that till it's dry. Studying your book, essential one stroke painting reference, learning about composition. Yay! <laughs> That's right. Now there is right under here. We got some dark in there, under here. This is just I just picked it up right on the red brush. All right, and then it's got a wrinkle in here. 
And then this comes across here, but look right in here. All right, so it gives you a little bit of a glare we're going to put on there to look like a wrinkle. And then we're going to come in here and split that a little bit. So see, I'm splitting that that way and this this way. But then... See, doesn't that look like it's actually wrinkles? <laughs> I'm going to come in here. All right, so look, you're just going that side and that side. But then in here, I'm going to put the depth that comes right in this right area right here. Right in here, it went just like that. So it looks like it, it folded over a little bit there. And then in there, it had a little bit of dark out here, but mostly it's this wrinkle in here. All right, so I'm going to go right in there and put dark. Right in here and put dark. And then see that wrinkle over there? we got to do the same thing here. Isn't that pretty? No, so see, I want this to look dreamy too. Thank you, Miss Teresa. <clears throat> okay, so I could take a teeny bit of white and just work it into that red to not be pink, but to have a glare on here. Just a little bit of a glaze and a little bit in here. Teeny bit right here and right in here. There's a little bit there. Okay, so what I did do is I had to take medium and white. All right, so you see that medium and white? So it's kind of inky. And then look, I'm just going along this edge, a little bit more white. And... And put it on and kind of rub it off. But you got to leave it. It's hard to leave that. I had to play with it a couple of times before I, I liked what it looked like. It's just kind of dreamy looking. And that's exactly what's happened to the... Uh, The wreath in the background. So what's happening is snow is hitting, right? The little spots of white. It's like the snow is hitting it. I don't know because I'm I didn't live in the winter. 
areas with snow, but see, and then that white like hit and miss on it made it a little bit more dreamy. All right, now, if you don't want your red messed up with white, don't, but I just like that it kind of blurred out parts of the bow. Don't do that. I just got red on there. Okay. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> Say you're going to go watch this a few times, right? All right. Let's do the cardinal. Oh, before I start the cardinal, I'm going to come in here and do some areas where the berries are going to be. Since I got this pink, I'm going to go right there. Now I'm going to do a few spots. So I can do some smaller spots. And then the berries are going to go there. So one, two, she's going to be red up there. He is actually. So you got to put a little uneven. I don't want to see any circles out there. Uneven spots. Okay. There you go. Over oh, there's good. I have triangles again. It looked like it would have one back here, but I'm I'm worried about it hitting where the where the cardinal is. So I'm just gonna skip that for now. All right, so we're gonna come all along here and have him sitting on the bow. All right. This isn't really hard if you kind of lay out your pattern. I haven't shown you anything that's real difficult so far. Except like knowing where this dark would go. But if you just put dark everywhere I put dark and kind of turn it off and fill it in and then come back to watch. Okay. I did have his little feet come in there, but right now I'm just going to do that. So we just basically did his shape. Okay. Now let's side load the red. So the red's going to come right under here. He's going to have more of a belly. So Barry Wine's going to come right under here. Kind of tap it in there. All right. That doesn't look good right there. I'm going to blend it in a little bit. Now that comes across his tail. Do you see that? And then I come in here with chisel edge strokes coming up. They're coming down here, but they're going up the bird. Remember I said on the very tail, I mean tip up here, I'll put a little bit of licorice. All right, so I'm going to put some dark in here. Okay, so you see dark under there, dark under there, dark in the wings. And then right up here, All right, I'm going to get a smaller brush. Okay. Now what I want to do, I'm going to get the red with a teeny bit of white. And so this is what happens to Cardinal's beaks. 
sometimes they're black, but usually they're not. So I'm going to come into here into a triangle and come out into a triangle. Oops. Well, I'm going to, I made that too big because it, I went out too far. So take a wet brush pretty quick and you can take it right back off. See how that takes it off? Wet brush. All right. I need, let's just give a teeny touch of yellow ochre maybe. Because, and I'm going to use a smaller brush. Let's get a six. That brush is too big. So I got yellow ochre and then red. Okay, so I go into his head. A little bit more yellow ochre. You have a V into his head. And then you have a V outside. Okay, I still need to get it lighter. Okay, so okay. they actually do have a pretty big beak. Put a little teeny bit of white. I'm going to put a touch of, oh. see how I touch the white on the upper half? There. All right, now I'm going to get a two. And this is what makes a cardinal look like a cardinal. I swear I had black. I guess it's from painting I did earlier, I guess. Where's my gray plate? I did, didn't I? Nope. Let's just grab some black. All right. So the only place I'm putting licorice with the two is around this face. So if I come down, it scoops down and then up. And then his eye is going to be right there. Do you see where the eye is going to be? So I cover this spot and this spot and so where the eye is i come up here so see that right there it, it actually goes to right there see all the way up to there and then where the mouth is it peeks down and then we put a little bit of this on the tummy here we go isn't that fun so you just got to be very slow, not very aggressive when you're laying out this color. All right. All right. Now I do want to have some black on his end of his tail and I want a bigger brush than that let's see so I'm going to side load the, the black so I pick up some white I mean medium and side load and so look I'm going to come right along here put a little bit of black Okay, so black on this tail. I'm getting a little too big on the tail, so I would just kind of not be that big. But right in here, you separate his tummy from his tail. See that? And you can take a little bit under here to, to define it a little bit more. Isn't he pretty? All right, so... Sometimes they're better looking than other times. Just telling you. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I got, I didn't do that one like I would like to, but I'm not redoing it. <laughs> Have you ever done that? Like that's enough.
All right, now we need to take the two to make this eye. So I'm gonna bring it down and bring it up, I mean. So, so I'm gonna take, I don't think y'all can see this. Uh, oh, come on, I made a bow move. There we go. So I'm gonna take some black back on this too. And I'm gonna side load ever so lightly some white. See? So you're gonna come right here where the eye would be. And see, all you have to do is the bottom half of it and just put a little dot. And I like to kind of put a little bit of white right here. Okay. Now he's got talons. I might can do them with this too. See where his talons got him on this bow. So I, you can even grab a teeny bit of white, like it's some snow on it. Okay. There he is. So if you go slow, I want you to think about this again. If you go slow and you look at this, from here all the way around to here is a circle. It started here and then it goes up. But then the body does fi finish a, a, like a pear shape around there. And then this right here, instead of, see, it definitely doesn't look like a ball sitting on top of a body. So when you're up there at the point, that's when you come down and you don't just go straight down, you curve it here and then that wing was easy for you to see. So then we just need to pull it that way. That kind of looks like a petal of a flower. And then the tail's always coming out from his bottom right there. Okay. Now let's keep that up there like that so I can show you the daubers. So I daub these on and then I dry brush some white because it's like snow, right? So... I found a bunch of daubers, but they were in the garage, so they're all decinerated from living in Florida. <laughs> all right, where is my red plate? Okay. So, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the dauber, and I'm just going to pick up red, tap it a little bit. And right here, I'm going to just one, two, three... You get heavier red here and there. All right. And I'm not making it perfect. I'm going to add some reds in here. So you put some dobs to, together and then some apart. One, two. And then put one, two, three together over there. Having that dark in the background, the berry wine, makes these look really good. And see, they're, they're real, a little bit more abstract, right? So we're not trying to get it exact. Okay. Now I can't put that snow on there until I have to send you pictures of it because unless I blow dry it, maybe I'll blow dry it because I like to see it kind of it happening. All right, close your ears again.
that's messed up. I let that flap on top of here. And so I'm going to put some snow on here, but I don't want. Uh, and I blow dried it before I saw it. Oh well. I'm going to come in here and cover some of that. No, it's still red in that brush. Okay. And I did it over here. Darn it. I've done everything to show you how to fix everything. <laughs> and you know I did that on purpose, right? Jeez Louise. I didn't even have a hard day and I didn't mess it up. Okay. All right, so that I know that red's too wet. I was just trying to figure if I had got a maybe up here. So all I did was do a dry brush. See, I got it red all over here too. All right, so you just streak across it. So. But we don't want to do that while it's wet, okay? Oh, ha. Don't brush it too much. I want it to look like snow has kind of hit it. Without making it pink. <laughs> okay, now to finish our guy off. What we're going to do is put our sponge in the water. All right, I'm going to use my toothbrush. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to pick up some of this. Wet it again. Okay. So that comes away from this. And I want to come in here. You could do heavier white. Let's see what that does. See like bigger spots in it. Especially when you're doing something like these berries. And you want them to turn out better. You can take. And put bigger. Splatters on it. So I'm putting snow out here. You see I'm picking up a lot of paint. To look like more like snow. But I don't want much on the cardinal. Just a little bit. Okay. I do think some bigger pieces out here. If this was maybe a little bit darker gray. But I also used to use some flakes of sparkle out there so that's my version what do you guys think is it fun <laughs> thank you guys i love you lucy all your beautiful um, hearts thank you thank you all right guys have a wonderful thanksgiving i can't wait to be with my family and we're cooking four Five turkey breasts, two huge hams. Got lots of people coming. We got some of the widows in my campers class are going to join us. And we're just going to have a good time together. And I'm sure you guys will too. Thank you so much. And 
Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, I did a lot of problem solving. But what I was going to tell you is to make sure that if you don't have anything to do this Thanksgiving, that you maybe sit down and do some painting or something that makes you feel good. Because sometimes when I lost my daughter, let me tell you, the only thing that gave me sanity is I would lose myself into my painting. And I just um, could paint just for a little bit, not think my daughter's gone, my daughter's gone. And so, um, so I was trying to slow down my travel on painting and then I just went crazy again. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Now there's no excuse for why I'm, <laughs> I am pro prolific right now. I just am passionate about what I want to share with you guys. I hope you're liking it. I hope I touched some spot of your great creativity that you needed. And there you go. Oh, well, Pat, that's great. I hope you're going and you enjoy your time because Sharon's house is a great place to be. <laughs> oh, thank you, Stephanie. It makes a big difference in our life. All right. So I got all this stuff around it. I will put the pictures up. Not, I'm not sure how fast Michelle can get it. but I, So I go and I put it on because she's on her vacation. But I put it on um, my website on the Facebook group so that y'all can see it quicker. All right. And there you go. It's our one stroke way, right? Thank you so much. Love you guys. Happy Thanksgiving.